Hey, it's Kim and welcome back to Pokemon Breaks. Today we've got a slightly different video and I'm going to show you all about how I create my custom cards or my card altars. I have a beautiful routes today that I'm going to paint from Battle Region and I'm really excited to get started. If you're interested in these custom cards, please hit me up on Discord. I have a page about organizing a custom card for yourself, if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, and if you'd like to see me paint more, I do paint one live on Twitch every week at 2 p.m. Australia time. So please feel free to join me and hang out. I love having suggestions. It definitely ignites my creativity to have the group involved. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, please leave it a like. Those things help more than you realize. Without further ado, let's get into the painting. So as you can see, this is gonna be a longer video. I would suggest grabbing a cup of tea or a coffee or a snack if you're just sitting down to watch this. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. I hope you find it relaxing and I hope that it provides a little bit of context as to the prices that these altered cards often sit on. Um, I sped this up about 500 times. I did cut some clips out and it is still really long. So they always take me quite a while. The first step to altering a card, especially the Japanese cards, is going to be sanding back that primary layer. There's a coating on top of the card that will cause your paints to separate and just not look very good. So if you just hit it with a scotch bright or even a nail buffer and just lightly take off that top layer, it really helps. And then what you want to do is lay down a base coat of paint to cover up the text and the texture on the card itself um, and especially covering up all the lines on the outside. All of those really bold things can take a little bit more time to cover. Um, I like to try to match the color to start with and I love using War Colors paints because they have a really good variety. They're nice and thin so it's really easy to get a pretty good finish right from the beginning. If you're just starting out and you're wanting to do an altar, using one that has a lot more darker colors is usually a lot easier. You can see that painting over the outlines and the texture in the card using a darker color, you don't need as many coats. It's a lot easier to work with. Um, and I find that getting the textures right and getting a good end result is definitely more difficult when you have to put down more layers of paint because the thicker it gets, the more challenging it can be to work with. I'm going to work a little bit harder to cover up the text across the top of the card and try to match the background color. You'll see that I go back and forth and I try to work on this a little bit because I couldn't get the tone quite right. It was a little bit cooler of a blue than I had in my sort of stash. Um, this ended up drawing a lot darker than I thought it would, so the sky took me a little bit longer than I would have anticipated, but I got it to a point I was happy to at the end. I'm going to work a bit more down the rest of the card and try to fill out the mountains, try to match that color a little bit more. One thing that I learned from chatting to another artist on Instagram called Aesthetic Chimp, Cole is lovely and he actually went to art school. One of the comments and feedback tips he gave me was not to over detail areas where you don't want to draw too much attention because obviously the viewer's eye is going to be drawn to where the most detail is. So with these mountains in the background, I wanted them to be hazy. I wanted them to not be super interesting. So I didn't spend a lot of time on them and I'm pretty happy with how they came out. So my perfectionist side is definitely showing here. I'm going back into the sky because I clearly was not happy with the color. There was a lot of back and forth here watching this back. Um, I probably need to just calm down a little bit, but I think it was a little bit too dark once it dried. So trying to lighten it up, trying to get the tone exactly the way I wanted it to. Once I put the clouds in, I realized that you couldn't see too much of that detail anyway. It didn't really seem to matter that much. 
The clouds in this particular artwork were one of my favorite things and one of the reasons I really liked this routes to start with. I think the style of the, the clouds is a lot like sort of that traditional Japanese art, which I really enjoy. So I did just try to extend the clouds and use that similar style, um, extending it out beyond the window of the card artwork. Um, and just to try to add a bit more detail, make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, I'm trying to match the color of the clouds. They weren't perfectly white. There was a little bit of a yellow undertone. So I did go back and forth to get the shading on the clouds to a place that I was happy with. Um, and then one of the more frustrating and challenging things about this particular artwork was that all of the original artwork had a lot of pretty stark outlines. But obviously using a paintbrush, I can't get the really tiny fine outlines the way that they have on the card. Um, what I ended up doing is once I stepped in and started doing some outlines on things like the clouds and the Pokemon and the other details you see me add in, um, I jumped back in with the color of the actual item to try to reduce the level of boldness. So as I'm putting the outline on now, you can see it's really bold, it's really dark, um, and that's still using a gray, not even a black, but it looks pretty stark. So once I lay down some outline, I'm gonna go back in with the white and almost paint over part of the outline to make it a little bit more subtle. definitely gotten a lot more confident with the outlining and I've been practicing it a lot more with my more recent cards. Um, I think one thing that I really enjoy about painting is the fact that you can always go back and rework things and add more detail or make them more subtle or shade or highlight or whatever. Um, and I think painting is a medium that shouldn't be too intimidating. And hopefully if you watch this video and you find it relaxing and enjoyable, I'd love to see it if you give it a try doing a card alter. Feel free to tag me on Instagram or send me pictures of cards that you make or if you want to make a video or share it on Twitch, I'd definitely love to check it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work on this tree in the sort of mid foreground, I guess. I really struggled to get the color right for this particular tree. I didn't realize how purple it was, so I ended up doing a lot of back and forth. Um, even in the end, I wasn't completely satisfied with where the color ended up, but I don't know why I sort of used a, a bluish green to start with and I really needed to work that purple in a lot more to get it to the right kind of coloring. So the next step for this one was to try to get the meadows in the sort of mid ground up to a level that I was happy with. Um, if you look at the card up close, you can sort of see the meadows going off into the distance and there's a ton of different colors. They're all really beautiful, muted, slightly neutral shades. So pink, green, um, and there's sort of a gray tone to all of it. Um, so I sort of just was working through trying to color match all of them to just extend them off to the edges of the card. Um, and I go back and forth a little bit. I think this is another area that I didn't want to add too much detail because again, you're not going to really want people looking specifically at that part of the card. Um, you just obviously want to cover up the lines and sort of extend the artwork so it's not super obvious that that's where the original artwork ended.
Definitely if you're replicating a card that has this similar sort of pattern going off the edges of the card, try not to do just straight lines. Try to use your imagination to think about where the lines might be going, if they might be getting wider or narrower at certain points, because um, that can definitely help to tie it in and make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, now this is tying into that lesson that I mentioned earlier about how with painting you can always go back and forth. So in the original artwork, you can see that the background to the flowers and the grass in the meadow is really pink. And I sort of didn't think about it very much before I started doing it. I just copied that very pink background and I end up actually working back in and changing this quite a lot because I decided I wasn't happy with it. Um, so I sort of worked in the original pink background and then by the time I add more detail to the card and more things in the foreground, I realized that that was just too bright. I felt like it didn't really work um, and I ended up going back over it and sort of fixing it up and doing something different. And I guess that's one thing about art and any kind of creative process is you're never totally locked into anything. You're never totally stuck. If you want to redo things or go over things again, um, particularly with painting, you always can. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I really enjoy about it is there's kind of no pressure in that regard. Um, the next thing I'm going to do in the foreground is add another Pokemon to the card. When I do these altars on Twitch, I always ask everyone viewing to come up with suggestions and we usually just go with whatever the crowd is most excited about. Um, doing it on my own was kind of an interesting experience to come up with the ideas and be able to execute it, I guess, without that kind of feedback. Um, but I ended up thinking that a shaman was a really perfect addition to this route being a sweet little sort of fairy grass type, um, very floral. I like the really feminine energy in this one. Um, and shaman just seemed like a perfect choice. I think it's such a cute Pokemon. On. So we've got this cute little ground shaman sitting right in the foreground. Um, generally when I'm adding a secondary or additional Pokemon to the card, I think the easiest thing to do is start out with your outline um, and then fill it in with sort of the background color to what that Pokemon is. Um, and I would recommend when you do that, and this is something that I was a bit naughty with, when you add your background color and um, just lay down that shape before you outline, so not what I'm going to do next, but before you outline, start adding the shading for that Pokemon. Um, particularly with these rounder Pokemon, things like Shaman and Psyduck, the shading is pretty um, obvious. It's pretty blunt. It's pretty big areas. And it's a lot easier to do that if you add it in before you start adding outlines. As I'm adding the um, sort of foliage for Shaman, it looks like his fringe, um, I'm doing a technique called wet blending, which is where I'm using a few different shades of green to create a really smooth transition between a lighter shade to a darker shade. Um, and that's a really good technique to use if you're wanting to create some dimension in a way that's a little bit more subtle. Um, I usually like to start with a lighter shade. I lay down a relatively sort of thick layer of it where I want it to be. Um, and then at the opposite end or where I want the darker shade to be, I work in the darker shade um, and I kind of work them back and forth moving towards the middle so you get a little bit of a gradation. Um, particularly for these sort of foliage things, it can look really natural and be really pretty. Now I'm just gonna work some darker green into the leaves to create a little bit more texture and shadowing and a little bit more dimension to the little shaman. Um, I really enjoy adding some extra details to the little Pokemon that I add onto the cards. It definitely makes it a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. Um, and you can see now how that wet blending just creates a little bit more shadow and detail and dimension to those leaves um, and just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. Adding all the extra little details and especially the facial features for the extra Pokemon I add to the cards is definitely one of the most fun parts about doing altars for me. 
Um, I did realize after I had finished this shaman that I really should have done the shading on its body before I added the outline. It would have been a lot easier, um, but you can't really undo these things. And like I said, it really doesn't matter with painting. You can always just go back over it. Um, adding little face definitely created a lot more dimension um, and his little feet. I love the fat little body on this ground shaman. It's so cute. Um, I was really happy with how it came out. I think it's adorable. I tossed up back and forth a few times how I was going to do the layout and the background for the shaman. So you'll see me start to do one thing and then I kind of change my mind. Um, this card, I guess, is a perfect example of how the paintings can kind of take different direction while you're working on them and you don't really have to get stuck into any of it. You can just kind of go back and forth and make decisions as you go. Adding the outlines to the extra Pokemon definitely gives them a lot more dimension um, and you'll see the little shaman come to life a lot more once I finally add its little face. Here I am going in with some really light gray, like I said, doing some shading after the fact that I probably should have done a bit sooner, but YOLO. Once I get all the little details on, I love seeing these extra Pokemon come to life. I think particularly watching it back once I added the little mouth, um, the little shocked expression that Shaman has on its face is super cute. And that is one thing I wanted to kind of try to continue with this particular artwork. I can see that Routes is looking somewhere away from the viewpoint of the imagery of the card. And I wanted the Shaman to be interacting with whatever that same thing was. Um, if you're still watching, let me know in the comments what it is that you think Routes and Shaman might be looking at that's off camera or off screen. Um, now this is, I guess, the first decision I made in terms of creating the background for this foreground Shaman. Um, I thought maybe I should paint him sitting in front of some sort of wall and then do some vines climbing up it. I toyed with it. I kind of played it out a little bit to see what it might look like if I did a rough outline and then I actually decided I really didn't like it. So I started doing this. I ended up changing my mind and I paint over most of it. Um, but I guess that's the way it is with painting. You can always start over and try something different and I ended up being happy with the end result. So that's all that really matters.
I'm gonna start adding some more detail into the background and expanding that flower field. One of my favorite things about this card with the original artwork was the beautiful flowers in the foreground. So I wanted to definitely continue that throughout my sort of expansion of the artwork. I ended up sort of, like I said, changing the background behind the flowers from this pink color to create something a little bit different as I move on. Um, but what I'm doing is adding the white flowers in and you can see that they're getting bigger as they get closer to the viewpoint and that's just to create a little bit of a sense of perspective because the smaller ones are obviously further away. Um, and I'm going to create the white flowers and then we'll add some outlines and add some of the other plants and things that you can see in that background portrait. I did play around a little bit with the texture on the plants, the background to the plants. Um, the outlines on the plants, there were a few unknowns and some things that I felt like I needed to just try out and workshop before I committed to anything. I took a little bit more time with deciding around the background and the details on these other flowers. I was a little bit indecisive and I kind of needed to just see what it looked like and then try again. So I played around with having sort of the solid pink background like it is in the original artwork. I ended up deciding that was just too much pink and I'm going to go back in at the end and fix it up and make it look a bit different. Um, but I sort of needed to see what it looked like at the time and then move forward from there. That's again with painting, you can always go back. You can, you can have as many do-overs as you want realistically. I'm going to add in those little green sort of strands of grass using a nice like yellow green to blend that out a little bit more into the rest of the artwork. Um, and then I will go in and add some more plants and lots more texture and some different colors. So with this grass, I wanted to add a little bit more detail and a little bit more texture. So I'm creating some shading with a sort of browner color and then adding a little bit of a very light yellow green sort of color to add a bit of a highlight, um, create a bit more texture, create some more leafy kind of foliage at the top of the grass. I work around this a lot, um, so I ended up doing these sort of different colors and then I felt like it was all too pastel and too sort of one note. So I'm going to go back in and do some outlines and do some other stuff and then at the end I actually stuff around with the background a bit more. So I guess in hindsight, if I could do this card over again, I probably would have approached this flower meadow quite differently. Um, there was a lot of experimentation for me to get something that I was sort of happy with. But I guess in the end, all that really matters is sort of working it to a place that, that you're content with it. So if you're wanting to paint, I think just give it a go. <laughs> Play around with it until you're happy.
If you've ever thought about purchasing an altar from someone who paints these cards, I hope that this video gives you a little bit of context as to why they might cost as much as they cost. All of these cards take a really long time. They're a lot of really hard work. Um, there's a lot of thought and effort and trial and error and you know sweat and tears that goes into these. Um, so if you are purchasing cards, please be mindful of the artist and how long they probably spent on it. Um, and hopefully this helps you appreciate it a little bit more. So I'm going to add some more outlines and texture to create a bit more dimension in terms of all of these leaves. Um, I, it did end up, I guess, like I said, playing with the background a little bit more, but I think adding the outlines makes a really big difference in terms of how the card looks and creates a lot more dimension, makes it a lot more interesting. So I was definitely happy. I was sort of gung-ho and confident with putting outlines into all of the different bits of this card. What I decided to do instead of creating a brick wall at the front in front of the shaman was to actually put him hiding in a little bit of a shrub. So I've created some different shades of green and I'm outlining where I'm going to put the shrub. Um, and then I ended up spending quite an inordinate amount of time doing shading and outlining and things on all the leaves. Um, I was really happy with how it came out in the end. So I guess that's all that really matters. I'm really trying with this card to stick to that more sort of neutral color palette. Um, I think in the original artwork, a lot of the, the tones are sort of a cooler, almost gray tone. So I've tried to continue that with that green. And I think that's maybe where I sort of went a little bit wrong with the pink. Um, it's standing out because it's quite magenta. So I think what I do end up doing to make it a little bit more neutral as I go forward um, improves it a lot. And in this bush, I guess I'm just trying to make it look like Shaman is kind of hiding within a three-dimensional shrub. So I'm shading around him with just the gray. Um, it'll be a bit darker around him and then lighter on the outside to try to make it look a little bit dimensional, like he's dug a little bit of a burrow in the shrub. You'll probably see almost every step of the way I sort of go back and forth and second guess my color mixing. Um, I put some green in there. I decided it was too bright. I've mixed some other stuff in with it. Um, I do go back and forth a little bit. And with this shrub, I kind of worked it out quite a lot to make sure that there was some good shading, but then also some good, like, I guess, random highlighted leaves, because I find often that's what happens in reality when you're looking at a, at a plant. Um, all of the leaves are not the same color. You do get some that are yellower or darker. So I tried to create that slightly realistic element to this one.
So I'm still working on the shrub. There's a running joke in my Twitch because I do tend to spend a lot of time on bush things. Um, but I just wanted to get this looking right, create some textures, have some different shades, different colors of green, try to keep it interesting. Um, and it was, I guess, just a fun sort of thing for me to work on and create something a little bit different. It's an addition to the landscape that wasn't there before. So I wanted to try to add as much detail as I could to keep it, um, keep it interesting and sort of tie it in with the level of detail in the background of the card. Obviously, if you've got something that's closer to the foreground, it's more in the focus. So I did want it to be as detailed and as pretty as possible. going to try to create some more highlights on the top end of the, the shrub so where the sunlight's hitting it make it a little bit brighter and lighter and I guess how when you can see leaves in the sunlight and they get a little bit more translucent that was sort of what I was trying to create with that texture um, using that sort of lighter green yellow color to add a little bit more dimension. Does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, ooh. Can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia. A darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me. did spend a fair bit of time on that shrub, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, I'm going to add some more outlines onto some of the leaves to create some shadows between the leaves, um, create just a little bit more dimension, bring it into that sort of third dimension. Um, and from there, I'm going to move forward with adding another Pokemon to the card. If you're still watching and you don't know what it is, leave a comment down below to have a bit of a guess. Um, the shading on the leaves, I think, just created a little bit more of that sort of shape to the card, um, brought the leaves into the foreground a little bit more, um, and just added, I guess, a little bit more texture, which is similar to the, car to the original card in the background. And I only just realized that I did not finish the details on the shaman's flower. So that was a mistake. Going back in and adding that now. I realized when I put the shaman in that sort of darker background, some of his outline got a little bit lost. So I've added some of that back in to just make sure that he's as detailed as possible. And now I'm going to add some shadows. 
That's definitely something I've been focusing on doing a lot more recently and I think it adds a lot more depth and dimension to the cards that I'm painting. So making sure that whatever details I'm adding, um, whether it's Pokemon or extra sort of items or whatever, um, making sure that I'm giving them shadows because I think that that does really create a lot more shape and is definitely something I was forgetting to do when I first started. So here I am adding another Pokemon to the card. I decided because Lily Gant was such a big part of Legends Arceus, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful. I wanted to add her pre-evolution to this one. So we're gonna put a cute little Swadloon Cabbage Baby in the foreground. Um, so that's what I'm starting on now. I've just laid down the basic sort of outline color using the yellow and the light green um, to give an idea of where I want to put him. And then I'm going to add in all of my details and my outline. Um, I did remember to do shading for Swadloon before I added my outline. So you can see I've used sort of a light gray in the base. Um, and then I'm starting with a darker green towards the base as well um, to create a little bit more shadow and a bit more depth to that particular Pokemon that we're adding. Obviously decided that I needed to let the paint on the Swadloon dry before I added any more detail. So I'm adding a little bit more shadow, a little bit more depth, and sort of those background leaves that you're sort of just seeing of the shrub um, in the shape of it. So hopefully that helps make that shape make a little bit more sense. I realized looking back at the background that there was kind of a light gray outline around the different sort of components or parts of the meadow. So I've added that into my little extension areas as well. I worked in a little sort of leaf in the foreground to try to add an area of interest there. Um, and now that that paint's had a little bit more of a chance to dry, I'm gonna add some more details and outlines to the Swadloon in the foreground. Similar to the Shaman, I feel like adding the eyes to the new Pokemon definitely really brings them to life. 
I'm pretty happy with how this cute little swad loon turned out. Um, once I add the eyes in, we're nearly done. I just need to rework the background a little bit more. Um, and then this card should be pretty much finished. With this expression, I decided to just kind of keep with the theme of looking off to the left and, and being shocked. Um, super curious what you think they might be looking at. Um, I, I really have no idea. I feel like it could be Arceus coming down from the sky. It could be anything, but they all look pretty legitimately shocked. With the background, what I decided to do was work the sort of brown soil card right around the base of all of the flowers through the background. And I decided that, I guess what I was envisioning with the, the floral meadow that Routes is standing in is that there's probably some little pink flowers and you're seeing the tops of the pink flowers because it's far away. Um, but if you were really up close, like we are in the foreground of the card, you'd probably see mostly soil and then see a few pink flowers. So that was how I decided to sort of change this layout in a way that I thought made a little bit more sense um, and wasn't quite as bright. I just felt like it was a little bit too much. Um, like I said, I think if I could have this card to do over again, I may have approached it differently. I probably wouldn't have laid down all the pink in the back, but such is life. Um, and I think, like I said before, that's one of the really fun things about painting is that you can always go back in and rework it and add stuff in or paint over it. Um, and it's really no big deal. So hopefully this card, I guess, with all of its reworking and moving around of things inspires you that if you're interested in painting and it's something that you want to give a go, hopefully it gives you the confidence to give it a crack. Um, I'm more than helpful, happy to have people in Twitch if you've got questions, if you want to join in, um, if you want to do crafts while you're watching me do crafts, I think that's a really fun idea. Um, so definitely let me know what you think of the card in the comments. Um, and if you've got any other ideas for future altars or things that you'd like to see, I'm I'm very curious to know and I'd love to hear your feedback. because I can't leave well enough alone. I'm still kind of fiddling with these flowers to try to get them to where I'm happy. Um, but in the end, I am super stoked with how this Sweet Routes came out. I love the original artwork. I think it's a beautiful meadow. I love the color scheme. And it was just fun to add some extra Pokemon to it, expand the flowers, add some extra details. So I really enjoyed doing this altar. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really happy with how this gorgeous routes came out. If you have any comments or suggestions about future cards to paint or other ideas for videos, please leave them down below. I'm definitely keen for your feedback. I'd love to see you next time. And until my next video, please look after yourself and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. I plugged the stuff. Yep.